a break. Sports lighting. Now, there's a company, Musco is one, uh, American Sports Lighter. Those are floods. Those are serious floods. Are they like LEDs or are they just fluorescent? So far, they... there may be now. The technology's probably got it to where they have LEDs, but normally those are going to be the metal halides, okay. the floods. Metal halides got a really good high punch, and they basically have a group of them, have a bank of them, and they'll uh, aim it, this one here, this one here, this one here. And it's, I mean, it's television uh, production quality. You can have 80 foot candles on that football field. You know, Seems weird because they're so far up there and how they make such a They're, they're spots. They're, <laughs> they're putting a spot, but then when you multiply those spots, they overlap and overlap enough to where you just got to, so, and they're all around the field. So mm-hmm. they, they fine tune it. And with electronics these days, they, they, every spot on the field's got a, got a bulb that pointed right at it, basically. Mm-hmm. So um, I did a job in Eagle Pass where we went to high school uh, mm-hmm. a while back, and we did we did uh, sports lighters, flood lighting that entire football field. No, that I've is extremely expensive lighting. I've <laughs> seen uh, different uh, lighting fixtures to uh, like a, so that they won't bust in flames or whatever. They have, I guess, like little break uh, circuit breakers inside of them or something that kind of just turn them off when they get too hot. Right. Uh, which, yes. When you specify these, uh, especially high intensity discharge, uh, HFA fixture metal halide, if it's 120 volt, you call out for SF, uh, which is single fuse. If it's double fuse, or if it's 240 volt or 208, you call out DF, which is double fuse. And that is a quick way for that single light to go out if it gets too hot. If it's throwing too much current, that fuse will open. So, so that's one way to do it. Uh, I'm sure those big spotlights have the same thing. They will be individually fused. And then the feeder itself will go back to an overcurrent device, a circuit breaker, or a few switch somewhere for that entire feeder. Usually <coughs> one pole has a transformer, mm-hmm. and, uh, and those lights up there are probably 480 volt. So each one you see is getting 480 volts. That does several things. The main thing it does is it minimizes the current flow. Power, when you see a 100 watt light bulb with 100 watts, mm-hmm. is power times current. So uh, the higher the voltage, the lower the current. Because voltage times current is power, if that makes sense. Okay. You guys know this. I'm telling you. You studied already, that. Y'all you already know that, that right? Y'all went through electrical? <laughs> uh, did y'all go through circuits and networks? Roughly. Uh, good, good deal. And y'all are ahead of me then. Uh, Another type is building mounted lighting outdoors. Now, you've heard wall packs. You, you hear about wall packs. Well, wall packs say you've got a big metal building that's got a fancy little office up front. Well, around the perimeter of that metal building, you're going to put wall packs at 12 feet, and they're going to work good. Up front, you're going to put something a little more decorative. It could be a cylinder type. It could be a fancy wall sconce of some kind or, or soffit lighting or something a little more fancy. Uh, Typically, you'd want to control those with two things, a photocell and a time clock. The photocell lets it come on at dark. Whether we're on daylight savings time or not, dark's dark. They come on at dark. The time clock turns it off at midnight or 1 in the morning or 2 in the morning. So it resets, and the next day, they're off, but then at dark, they come on, and then the time clock turns them off. So we, that's a good control method. Uh, in the case you want to have security lighting, you want it on all night. Take the time clock out. Leave it on photo cell. Put it on at dark. It goes off in the morning. Okay? You can mix and match these. You can say, well, the back of the building is, needs to be on a photo cell only. Front of the building, we can turn it off because it's got the street right here. Nobody's going to see. Nobody's going to uh, break in right here in the front. They're going to try and break in the back door. When you're doing pole mounted li- or when you're doing building mounted lighting, you want to keep into account most buildings have some sort of signage. Uh, and it could be signage that is lit from, from another light source or it could be backlit. But you, do, you want to coordinate with how you place your wall packs or your other exterior building mounting lighting with your signage so that it makes sense. Typically, you like it to be a little darker so the sign jumps out. So it stands out and draws attention to what they're trying to tell you. Uh, The third type of outside lighting is, talked about poles, talked about buildings, how are you going to light outside? Quick, 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 quick. Where are we going to put them? 
they're not on a pole. They're not on a building. Where are they? Yeah. In the ground. <laughs> they're in the ground, shining up. Okay. These can be above grade, or they can be in grade. You can have a fixture that you can walk on or drive a car over, but it's still shining up at, say, a flagpole, the building, uh, landscaping. Those are very expensive lights. Uh, Guardco makes some, uh, which that's okay. Very expensive is okay as long as the owner wants that and they're willing to pay for that. But if you have a budget, you, you tell them early, well, these are, these are extremely expensive fixtures. If you still want something, then good. Even the flat ones that are in grade can be aimed to where you can aim that a certain amount to where if you have the flagpole over here or flags or a facade that you want to light, you can aim that fixture at that. Uh, but typically what you'll see is above grade stick stuck in the ground or mounted on a base and it's, it's got a pivot, some sort of yoke mount or something, and you can aim those at the building or at signs or at uh, landscaping. No. Controlled the same way. Uh, what about those lights that you see uh, downtown by the American Bank Center? You have like those fountains with the uh, shooting water all over the place. And you can, the you can put fixtures inside the uh, fountain, yes, to shine up. Mm -hmm. uh, we spec them sometimes. And those, that's uh, pretty big. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You want to make very sure that also, on top of having that one powered, it needs to go through a GFCI to avoid uh, or to minimize shock, electric shock to humans. Uh, we didn't get into GFI very much, but GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupters, any receptacle that is near water, within six feet of water, it better have a GFCI. That one back there, it's got one. Uh, the one on over the other side of the microwave is or is not, I can't tell. But they could once, be on the once you get way. six feet away from water, you're by code, you're okay. A lot of the things that we do, code dictates it. If code says do it, I do it. If it's vague, I still do it. If, if it says, yeah, you might, sometimes you do it, but I do it all the time to be safe. Because the number one thing of an engineer and an architect is to protect human life. Anything you design is to protect human life. Okay, that's number one. After that, make it look good, make it work good. Make it last 100 years. Uh, okay, I got about five minutes. The last thing, last sheet, guys. <laughs> then we talk about football. Wait a minute, I'm in Texas. Is it, is it whoop? Or is it hook them? No. Hook them. I like yeah. Texas. I like Texas football. <laughs> I don't necessarily like Johnny football that much, but Alabama took care of him the second time around. <laughs> we figured that boy out. Uh, the last thing to talk about in lighting is emergency egress. If the lights went out right now, if we lost power to this building right now, would we be able to see how to get out of this room? Better. Yes, yeah. Switch, yeah. Better. Exit, the, the light. See that bug out on the wall? Is that column? The spotlight side there. That's, that's your emergency egress uh, light. That is supposed to uh, energize when you lose power. Now, there's different ways we can show emergency egress. Uh, that's a good method. I call that the, the bug eye or the frog eye. If you had an exit sign in this room, it may also have those on it. You can have an exit sign that not only shows you how to get out of the building, so that's the exit, but it's also got the bug eyes on it. Uh, by code, when you leave a private office and you step out into the corridor, you need to see an exit sign somewhere. If you don't see an exit sign, the engineer just messed up. He's got a problem. So when you step out of any private office, you need to see an exit sign. And it can be a directional, like you don't see that, I can't get out that way, but I see an exit with an arrow, like, okay, go over here and go down that corridor, and now I can see how to get out. Or back over here or wherever. You need to step out of any private office and see an exit sign. And it better be lit. Not only that, but you've got to, if they've lost power, you've got to see how to walk to that exit without stumbling over something or somebody. Uh, one foot candle. One foot candle is a rule of thumb. You need at least one foot candle, which is the light of a, a candle one foot away in a totally dark room. Okay, so we, it's enough light. It's not much, but it's enough to see how to get out. Uh, if you have, say, an office just outside of, just come out of the corridor or into an office, then you go into an inner office. 
when you step out of this one, obviously you're gonna see, but when you step out of this office into this office, this office all of a sudden has to have one of those or some other sort of. Like that's address. a storage room. Does it have to have one coming into here? Yes, when you step out of the storage room, you see, you see, you see here. Yeah. But if there was another storage inside <laughs> that storage, then this storage would have to have one of those. Okay. So I'm saying every private private office does not have to have one of those or any other kind of egress ladder. But when you step out of that private office into a private a public area, you have to see how to get out. So is okay. this room necessary to have it? Well, yes. Because of that. Yes. Okay. This is not a private office. This is a classroom. Uh, conference rooms, break rooms, anywhere where you're going to have likely have more than one person, you want to have an egress light. Mm -hmm. Private office, one person normally. You may have two in there, but normally it's one person. So those aren't required. But you do have to step out into a space that is lit and showing you tell how to get out. You can tell how to get out. Uh, bug eyes, exit signs. Another way, if uh, a lot of the higher end restaurants and, and some places just don't like those. They just they don't like those. So how else can you like? How else can you do egress lighting? Can you say it, Diego? About the the other way to do egress lighting or emergency lighting? Uh, I thought I heard you say it. I don't think so. Uh, what you would do is these have a ballast. These lamps up here have ballast, fluorescent ballast. Well, they have what they call a battery ballast, so that when you lose power that takes over, okay? What do you have to do to let that know that we really lost power? You didn't just turn the lights off, we really lost power. What do you have to do? You have a sensor? You have to have a voltage sensing relay, but you also have to pull the hot, an unswitched hot to, the, to those lamps that have that emergency ballast. So it knows the difference between he just turned the lights off or we really lost power. Otherwise you've got false tripping and you're, you're burning your ballast, it doesn't work that way. So any emergency fixture that has, say, a grid troffer or a standard uh, two by four, three lamp, four lamp, whatever, in addition to the switch leg, it'll have a switch and a neutral, but it'll also have an unswitched hot 120 volt or 277 volt. A lot of lighting in big buildings, 277. This might be 277. I don't know. So you have to have those <coughs> two, two wire. You have to have the additional unswitched hot to every egress light that has an emergency ballast so that it really knows I lost power, okay? Uh, and they'll last for like 30 minutes, you know, 30 minutes. And a lot of times if you have a four lamp fixture, maybe only the two center lamps are, are on the emergency ballast. It, it may only burn those two center lamps, but it'll burn them for 30 minutes or thereabouts, plenty of time to even get a, a, a wheelchair out of the building, no problem. Any questions on lighting, egress lighting? Is there an hour, like an hour of rating that it has to be on to have the access to exit? Like you mean walls are rated? And yeah. Is, is there a standard uh, time range that it has to cover to exit? You know what I'm saying? Does it, if this was how they were able to exit from these lights, they would switch over. Does this have to be on or be lit for a certain period of time? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so that's in a code. Basically, they're they're going to tell you, and I think everything I expect is going to be 30 minutes or greater. I think it depends on the occupancy of the building, the size of the building, the floors of the building. Right. Vertical floors are going to have to have much longer egress time. Down, say the twin towers, mm -hmm. they were designed correctly, and uh, all the way down, they were still able to see how to get out, even though the power had been gone for a long time. Right. They cut the power immediately, but. Uh, the egress lighting was there, it was in place. They weren't trying, they should not have been going through the dark. Uh, now, Corpus Code has, not only do you have to see how to get out of the building, but once you step outside, they have what they call a stoop light, so that you don't trip, and they have begun enforcing that over the past five or six years. You have to see out of the building, and then interconnected with that exit or egress lighting, I've also got a, a battery fixture outside either in the soffit or on the wall, by the door, by all exterior doors, so that you, you don't stumble over something once you get outside. And that, that gets you out of the building, and you should be good to go. Any other questions? Thank you very much. I thought Thank it was you. I appreciate a it. good appreciate overall the time, guys. look at it.
and come back and take their exam for them? <laughs> <laughs> I took the PE. I'm done. <laughs> now I just got to do uh, CEUs from time to time. Yeah.